Hey teachers, let's talk about grading. If you use a points-based grading policy like this, then you might have a problem, an equity problem. In this video, I'll tell you what that problem is and suggest an unconventional grading policy to help address it. So if your grading scheme includes activities that promote learning, then you have a problem. What do I mean by activities that promote learning? Well, a typical points-based grading scheme has lots of different categories. Things like exams, papers, homework, in-class assignments, stuff like that. Activities that promote learning are the activities you have your students do for the purpose of learning. This is in contrast with summative assessments, which are activities students do to demonstrate what they have learned. By the way, you should only grade activities that promote learning based on completion, not correctness. I talk about that in another video, go check it out. So if your grading scheme includes activities that promote learning, then you have a problem. Two problems, actually. The first problem is that different students learn differently. Consider these two students. Marianne and Jose both perform well on assessments. But Jose completes all of the assignments, whereas Marianne rarely turns in anything. Maybe Marianne came in with a lot of background knowledge. Or maybe she doesn't learn very well from your assignments, but she learns really well from YouTube videos. The point is, she's not doing the assignments you gave, but she's clearly learned the material because she performs well on the assessments. So should she get a lower grade? I mean, I think that if students perform well on assessments, then they've mastered the material and they should get a good grade. So the first problem is that if you include activities that promote learning in the final course grade, you penalize students who learn in different ways than the activities that you've assigned. The second problem is for students who do need to do those activities to learn. Because if they don't do the activity, then you penalize them twice. Once for not doing the assignment, and once for scoring low on the assessment because they didn't learn what they would have learned if they had done the assignment. So, based on these two problems, the solution is obvious. Don't include activities that promote learning in the final course grade. Only include summative assessments. I'm sorry, what was that? Ah, uh-huh, aha, uh -huh, okay. How will you get students to do the assignments if you don't give them points for it? Right. So, yeah, that's a good point. Um, there are ways to incentivize students doing assignments without giving points for it. But let's say that you do want to give points to incentivize that behavior. Now remember that activities that promote learning should only be graded on completion, not correctness. Which means if you include those things in the grading scheme, then that's the equivalent of including effort in the final course grade. Now, whether effort should be reflected in the final course grade or whether the grade should only reflect content mastery is a philosophical question that I can't answer. <laughs> the education community has not come to consensus on that. But if you do want to reward students for completing assignments, then you have to include those things in the grading scheme, right? So how do we choose? How do we choose between including activities that promote learning in the grading scheme or only including summative assessments? What if you didn't have to choose? Why do you have to choose between these two grading schemes? I actually use both, and a third one that's a mix of the two. This one weights homework more heavily, this one weights the final exam more heavily, and this one is a mix in between. At the end of the semester, I calculate each student's grade using all three schemes, then I give them whichever one is the highest grade. This way, students who do all of the homework but don't have the highest assessment scores get rewarded for their consistent effort, and that pulls their grade up a little bit. And students who don't do many of the assignments but perform well on the assessments can still get a good grade. It's more equitable because there's not just one way to access higher grades in your classes. By using multiple grading schemes, you let different types of learners be as successful as possible in your classes. Here are some things to consider if you want to implement multiple grading schemes in your classes. Your grading scheme will have different categories than mine, but the key thing is to separate the categories into activities that promote learning and assessments. Then create your grading schemes on a scale that weights those two types of categories differently. Don't offer grading schemes that you don't feel good about on their own. For example, I wouldn't feel good about a grading policy where 80% of the final course grade is based on completion of homework. I do think assessments need to be a significant portion of the final course grade. So just make sure that each one of your grading schemes is consistent with your pedagogical values. 
don't make your students choose which grading scheme will apply to them. That will unintentionally give an advantage to students with the mathematical savvy to figure out which grading scheme is best for them. Instead, you should calculate their grade using each grading scheme and give them whichever one is the highest. With a little bit of upfront work and an Excel spreadsheet, you can do this pretty easily. It can be hard for students to predict their final course grade if you use multiple grading schemes, because every learning management system I know of only lets you input one grading scheme. So to help students predict their final course grade, I give them this what if grade calculator, where they can input their scores and predicted future scores, and it calculates their final course grade with each grading scheme. I've put a link to that document in the description if you want to use it for your classes. One last thing before you go. I did not invent multiple grading schemes. John Bell and his team at Brigham Young University did. They published it in this paper. I've put a link to that paper in the description if you want to go check it out. And if you have thoughts, comments, questions, put them in the comments. I read them all. And because it's YouTube, subscribe! <laughs> Thanks for joining me.